Welcome back to the channel everyone. If you're interested in a large rifle primer performance comparison in my 6.5 Creedmoor Ruger Precision Rifle with the velocity data, stick around. Welcome back everyone. Thank you again to all the uh, new subscribers. Thank you for the old subscribers coming back and watching another video. So guys, if you're new to the channel and you don't want to hear any history on this, by all means, I'll probably put a, uh, a time down in the description that you can click to to go straight to the data if that's all you guys want to see. Otherwise, uh, I will go through a couple reasons why I ran this test, some of the thoughts and theories behind it, and how we kind of got where we are and why we did this test. There's basically two videos that I've done where primers have kind of possibly come into question. One of those videos is the 6.5 Creedmoor Brass Comparison Part 2 video that I did, basically highlighting the difference in velocities of three different cases, the Hornady, the Norma, and the new Lapua Brass, and how we didn't necessarily get the results I expected, and also my 10-shot shootout video. I'll walk through those things as quick as I can to try and show you. Number one, let's go to the Brass comparison video. Um, I'll put the chart on the screen that I pulled back from that video um, just to give you guys a reminder, or if you're new to the channel, to uh, understand the, the reasoning behind this. Basically, I did a water weight on all these cases, of all the cases, the Lapua brass actually had the smallest internal case capacity. That being the case, we really expected to see the highest velocity with the same powder charge um, comparative to the other brass, and we did not see that. We actually saw it start off as the highest velocity, and it kind of tapered down. I actually got in a comment conversation with Ed Mobley of the 6.5 guys, Talking back and forth to him, he talked about using Magnum primers in the 6.5 Lapo Brass. That was kind of counterintuitive to my thinking. I've read a little bit on this subject, and I've probably watched way too many videos. Generally speaking, and I'm not going to say this is right, guys, this is just the research that I've done, it kind of insinuates that you're not really using a Magnum primer unless you have a Magnum case, which generally would insinuate that you had, at least in a rifle cartridge, 60 to 65 grains of powder um, that you were trying to ignite. Generally, we're talking about 42 to 44 grains-ish of powder in this cartridge, depending on the weight of your projectile. It, it really wasn't on my radar that I should be looking at a Magnum primer. Honestly, I've heard counterintuitive to accuracy that the Magnum primer tends to disturb the powder more, which actually causes uh, larger gaps in standard deviation. So it really wasn't on my radar, but uh, let's just be honest, Ed's been doing this a lot longer than I have, and so that really got me thinking, hey, I just wonder if all this powder is not being ignited in this case, especially that case, if you guys are not aware, has a smaller flash hole. Lapo actually touts about the brass as they say it's more accurate having that smaller flash hole. That's my concern. I'm like, well, am I losing velocity because I, I'm not using a Magnum primer? The second uh, thing that's caused me to think, well, maybe I should do some primer testing, is if you guys saw what I believe was last week's video, is my redo of my 10 shot shootout video. If you guys are not familiar with the channel, uh, I've been trying to do 10 shot shootouts of viewer loads, uh, assuming I can find data, of course, to correspond that I'm not going to blow up my rifle with it. In that 10 shot shootout video that I did, which again was a redo, I showed the performance of my one of my favorite uh, loads, which is this 140 grain ELD match uh, projectile loaded with H4350. I've actually had some great groups with this. My best group to date is actually with this load. And I did have a five shot group that was actually under four tenths of an MOA with this. As I went in last week's video, again, I, and I've done this twice. The first video I did, um, I had an average velocity of 26.44, my extreme spread of 23 and an SD of 6.9. On my redo, I had a very similar velocity of 26.39, but my SD opened up all the way to 11 with an extreme spread of 29 over 10 shots. I was a little bit concerned that my standard deviation opened up a little bit. So I thought, well, you know what? I think a primer test is certainly being called for. I just want to see what's going to happen. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, a standard deviation 11 is going to crucify anybody. However, if you can get a, a standard deviation of 7 rather than 11, you'd certainly rather have 7. So guys, since we've touched on the normal primers versus magnum primers, basically what you see in front of you is a collection of every large rifle primer that I had on the shelf or could actually get 100 of without actually having to spend $40 on a box of a thousand primers. And, and if you guys haven't seen a whole lot of videos on primers, you'll see people talk and have conversations talking about referring to heat of the primer. So basically the primer is adding some velocity to your load. And so if you had a cooler primer, you might have a lower velocity load. If you had a warmer primer, you might have a higher velocity load. I'm not going to tell you the science behind them. I frankly just don't know enough about them. All I know is I've, I've read about it enough now. I've 
talk to enough people that I believe are, are educated more than I am on this subject, I was going to do a test. So for this test, guys, basically what we did is we took the match load that I worked up, my H4350 load with 41.3 grains of H4350, the 140 grain ELD match, loaded them in Hornady brass, and I've put groups of five of all the primers you see in front of you. So we had seven different primers, five shots per primer, same load, same cartridge, same overall length. So in this experiment, the only difference you should really see is the effects of the primer. Again, since we just talked about the 10-shot shootout videos, you will obviously have note that we will be repeat testing the large rifle primer that we've used before, as well as the large rifle match primer, so the 210 and the 210M. So guys, I shot these in no particular order. I just went down the line that way I had them loaded. I'll probably put a shot of the brass on there. This load is obviously very safe in my rifle. I've shot it a lot. I'll show you the, all the primers, but you're really not going to see any significant difference between any of them. Before we get into the data, guys, I do want to mention that I am not going to claim that the group size of these is indicative of what we're going to get. But I'm not going to tell you that it is any of the primer's fault why these groups are smaller or larger than any of the rest. I'm not going to say it was my best day of shooting. I'd say it was an average day of shooting. I've routinely shot this load at three quarters of an MOA. And so if all these shots average that, you really shouldn't be surprised. I mean, again, I have shot this, you know, down at less than four tenths of an MOA, but everybody's got a good day someday, right? Getting into the data, guys, um, we're just going to start off with the CCI BR4s. The average velocity on the BR4s was 2659, a standard deviation of 7.3, extreme spread of 19, and the group size was 0.941 MOA. The CCI 200 was 2657 average velocity, standard deviation of 14.1, extreme spread of 36, but a 0.757 MOA group. The CCI 250s was actually an average velocity of 2660, a standard deviation of 5, extreme spread of 13, but a 0.933 MOA group. You will kind of notice with this group, guys, I'll leave it on screen a touch longer than I normally do. There is quite a bit of vertical stringing in this load. I don't know if that was just me this day. Obviously, windage is darn near perfect, so it's kind of interesting to me that... I saw vertical string with this load, so if anybody's got any great ideas, throw that down in the comments section. I'd love to hear it. Or it was it just a coincidence? Moving right along though, the S and B primers, 2641 average velocity, standard deviation of 6.8, extreme spread of 19, and a 0.557 MOA group. The Winchester large rifle primer, the WLR, was 2655, standard deviation of 12.4, extreme spread of 27. 0.885 MOA group. The Fed 210s that we've shot before, 2663 today, 5.5 standard deviation, extreme spread of 14, and a group size of 0.759 MOA. So when we shot this exact load the last time, our average velocity was 2644. It was significantly warmer this day. We actually even had a better standard deviation today and a lower extreme spread and right about the same size. So the uh, first time we shot this, I had a 0.838 MOA, 0.755 MOA, and today it was 0.759 MOA. But again, I'm not sure shooting was the whole goal. In fact, I thought honestly about leaving the groups completely out of this video. To me, what I was really shooting for was velocity and the statistics. The Fed 210M primer, average velocity of 2675, standard deviation of 9.5, extreme spread of 25. This particular one again, guys, the... Uh, Last time we shot it was 2639, but a standard deviation of 11, an extreme spread of 29, but that was over 10 shots. So our five shot group wasn't, the numbers weren't quite as bad, but uh, significantly higher velocity, but pretty darn good group, 0 0.7 MOA. It's certainly not bad, but lo and behold, for those of you guys that were actually, I mean, obviously I titled this video Large Rifle Primer. Um, I'm going to follow this up with a small rifle primer, guys. Just be patient. I don't have all of the Lapua brass ready to go to run the test yet. It is on my list of things to do. It will be coming down the pike, so stick around and come back. I am going to try and repeat this with all the small rifle primers that I have in stock to see if we find anything different, find anything similar. We can get a, into a gigantic theoretical primer discussion if you guys want. I just thought the data was pretty interesting. It certainly warrants some more testing, but I'm certainly interested that Lo and behold, the Magnum Primer that we tested had the lowest standard deviation and the lowest extreme spread of the entire group. And of course, the Fed 210 that we've tested before, which had very good standard deviation and extreme spread, followed right along with the repeat that we've done before. It certainly isn't classified as a Magnum Primer by any stretch of the imagination, but it's right along with there and honestly had the same velocity as 
I mean, within three feet per second of that load. The 210M had a slightly higher velocity, but again, the numbers for extreme spread and standard deviation weren't quite as good. I think more than anything along all this data is certainly you could pick some things up that you wanted to get rid of. So I certainly, not that they're bad primers, but of all the primers on the pick, certainly the Winchester large rifle primers would not be what I would continue on with. The CCI regular 200s, now again, probably not a bad primer. Um, and they're the same group size as everything else, but with the standard deviation and extreme spread, I don't think there's any reason to continue on with those either. I am extremely interested in a couple of the ones. Number one, you know, the Dark Horse, the S&Bs guys are the cheapest primer we have on the table by far. Those were actually $20 for a thousand. Yielded some of the best data, not the best, but uh, they had the best group for whatever it's worth, a half MOA group, just a little more. Standard deviation only, you know, under seven, extreme spread of less than 20. A little bit lower velocity, so we might have to creep the charge up a little bit for those and see if it, uh, see if the standard deviation and extreme spread hold true. All those guys behind the keyboards that are talking about these Magnum primers and using them in this load, I do find it interesting that lowest standard deviation, lowest extreme spread, so I might have to start using some of these uh, CCI 250s, guys. That's today's video, guys. Tell me in the comments what you guys think. Is this test completely worthless? Are you guys going to take some of it to heart? Are you guys going to try Magnum primers? Have you already tried and are using Magnum primers? Have you guys find those to be the same thing? Let us know in the comments section. This is a conversation back and forth between us. I'm really just trying to get this information out, save you guys some money so you guys don't have to buy 7,000 different primers to figure out which one's going to work the best for you. Though, this load may work completely different in your rifle and may have completely different results. I do find it interesting that people were talking about using these Magnum primers and lo and behold, these number 250s really did a great job. If it's not too difficult, I will try and uh, I'll throw the, the actual velocities from each group on there. Again, these are only five shot groups, but I'll actually throw the actual velocities up on there to see if you guys are interested. Because some of the groups did ha have, you know, one shot that kind of made the load look a little ugly. And, and maybe those are just odds of getting a different load, I guess. Certainly the Magnum primers did a great job. I do think that's an interesting test. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you're new to the channel and you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. There's always going to be more crazy stuff like this that I'm doing. I'm trying to get some information out. I do a lot of different load testing. If you guys, again, have this perfect load that you don't see in any of my videos, let me know what that is. And maybe someday I'll be testing your load on the channel and telling everybody what a great load you guys have worked up and how well it worked in my rifle as well. If you guys are new to the channel, just hit like and subscribe. Turn those notifications on so you get notified when I post a new video. Thank you guys for sticking out to the whole video. I hope to see you guys next week with another video. Stay safe in small groups to everyone.